In this video, you are going to learn all about Pan Pastels, their awesome compatibility with colored pencils, and how to use Pan Pastel as a base layer for animal drawings. Before we dive into everything that you need to know about Pan Pastels, I want to start by defining what I mean by base layer. So base layers are similar to underpaintings in that they are the first material that you lay on your surface. And this material is responsible for creating the initial composition, for laying in those first color impressions, and for establishing value relationships. But it is not responsible for the final surface texture for the fine details or for the very, very specific color choices. If you have used color pencil before, you know that this base layer can be incredibly time consuming and that a lot of this labor isn't necessarily visible in your final product. So if you're interested in speeding up your color pencil art, you might consider a mixed media approach in which you replace your colored pencil base layer with a base layer of another art material, specifically a medium that moves a lot quicker. There are a ton of different options that you can choose from when you apply your quick underpainting or base layer. And these include marker, water soluble crayons and pencils, and straight watercolor. But in this particular video, we are going to unpack what that looks like when you use pan pastels for your base layer. If you would like to learn more about the different kinds of materials that you can use to build up base layers for your colored pencil paintings, make sure that you let me know in the comments below. If you haven't heard of or used pan pastels before, pan pastels are essentially soft pastels, but they've been packed into these flat little pans. Now, this is important because it allows you to use the medium of soft pastels in new and innovative ways. Instead of having to hold on to a chunky piece of chalk, you can use sponges to apply color directly to your surface. And you can use a variety of sponges so that you can really play around with your mark and choose the right tool for applying pigment. To begin with pan pastels, you'll take your set of pan pastels and you'll lay them out on a flat surface. I am using the full set of 80 pan pastels and I went for the large set so that I could have access to every color, but also so that I wouldn't have to mix my colors too much. This allows me to grab the color I want, tweak it a tiny bit if I need to, and apply it directly on to my final drawing surface. And that is important for me because I use this particular product to save time. I don't know about you, but I can spend up to hundreds of hours on my color pencil pieces, especially those really large detailed pieces. And using this method, I'm able to lay in a base in anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And that can cut the total time of my project in half or more. Another awesome thing about Pan Pastels is that I can apply my pigment like I would apply paint. I can lay out all my colors, I can grab a tool that is very similar to a paintbrush, and then I can dip it in the color I want and apply it onto my surface. This is a very active and physical process, much like painting, but unlike painting, you don't need to worry about having a large ventilated space or worrying about those pesky dry times. Additionally, if you have a large set of pan pastels, you don't have to worry about the maybe hour it takes to mix up every single one of your colors. I have gone on a lot about why I like the 80 set, and if you want to get yourself an 80 set, I've linked them in the notes below, but I've also linked a couple other sets that I think are really good starter sets if you want to give this a try before you invest in a whole set, or if you just like to work with a more limited palette. The only other supplies that you're going to need for this pan pastel base layer, in addition to the pan pastels, are a set of sponges and your final drawing surface. If you purchase the 80 set, it comes with every kind of sponge applicator that you can imagine. And the sponge applicators in that set and that are compatible 
and sold with Pan Pastel are called soft tools with two Fs. I am also going to link a couple different options in the notes below for soft tools. I personally like having a couple different palette knife sponges and they have these little replaceable heads that go over the edge of the palette knife kind of like a sock. And I also like having access to a few larger sponges for laying in really big areas or for covering the background. When it comes to paper, you have a ton of different options for your final drawing surface. And I think it's best to pick something that you are comfortable working with already. For the portrait of the lab, I am using a Lux Archival sanded paper. And in this video, I'm also going to show you my process on pastel mat. Both of these papers are designed to be very compatible with pastels. However, the surface texture of these two papers are incredibly different. The sanded paper that I did the lab on is very textury and feels kind of like sandpaper. It holds tons of layers, but this paper is rough and it can chew up your sponge applicators a bit. Pastel mat is a much smoother surface. It holds lots of layers of pastel and eventually colored pencil, but it feels a little bit more velvety and is therefore a bit easier on your sponges. Another thing that I noticed about the Lux Archival sanded paper was that once I had a few layers of pan pastel on the surface and I started adding oil-based colored pencils, my whole drawing was kind of loose. And what I mean by loose is that the pigment was moving around on the surface a lot and it was difficult to get it to stay in place. So at this particular point in my drawing, I sprayed it with textured fixative. And I never experienced that over on pastel map. Pastel mat comes in a bunch of different colors, so you can pick out a color that specifically is compatible and cohesive with your art piece. I use this kind of sandy, warm color. I'm not 100% sure if it is buttercup or maize, but I felt like this color would look really good with the warm colors in the fur of the meerkat and would be a nice complement to a lot of the purple tones that I wanted to put in the background. Pan pastel base layers are awesome for color pencil artwork because they give you a quick win. In less than an hour, you can cover your entire surface with color, establish your value relationships, and make sure that your final composition works before you ever begin rendering out the details. Although I love pan pastels, there are a few limitations to be aware of. Because this material is relatively loose and applied with a squishy tool, it's great for laying in loose color, but not ideal for details. I feel artists that are using pan pastels and are getting really great results are typically combining them with something else. I like following up my pan pastels with colored pencils, but I've also seen other artists achieve phenomenal results by combining with charcoal, pastel pencils, graphite, and more. I don't incorporate pan pastels into every one of my colored pencil paintings, but instead I allow my subject matter my desired outcome, and the other materials that I'll be using to dictate when and if I will be using this medium. I really like pan pastels as a base when I am rendering fur because it allows me to lay down a base very quickly that I can then use colored pencils to lay individual hairs over the top. I would also recommend using pan pastels if you would like an out of focus background, if you would like a lot of softness in your final composition, or if you are working larger than usual. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking the time to watch this video. I can't wait to connect with you again soon, but until then, make sure that you try something new, make something beautiful, and take care of yourself. See you later.